Hello friends, hello Antalya, hello Antilanders. Welcome to this channel. Remember you can sign up, you can leave comments, you can leave some likes or dislikes if you don't like this video. Today I decided to share with you some of my experiences dealing with uh, Turkish accountants. As I said before, a friend of mine decided to open his own business, little business, proprietorship. So we went and talked to several of them. And I'm going to give you a little spread on each accountant we talked to and also give you my sum up as far as how you should really go about it. First of all, as I said before, in Turkey, it seems like if you know somebody a little bit, do not expect them to give you a little bit better deal than if they didn't know you at all. In fact, expect the opposite. One of the things which I did not mention yet, I went to the barber, which I go all the time, and he charges me 200 lira for whatever he does. Uh, and that procedure includes not only cutting hair, but it, it including removing hair, etc., etc. Uh, another person came in, and my barber doesn't know that I actually understand some Turkish. So another person came in, new customer, and uh, he offered him 150 lira. So he offers discount in front of his regular customers to a new customer which to me is a little bit strange. So I take it as uh, he probably did not know that I understand more than I do. And so he offered it right in front of me. Returning to the accountants, a friend of mine went to an accountant who was known to her for several years. And uh, because she really didn't do much as far as business before she was working, so now she decided to do so. He went into full swing and uh, she does speak Turkish really well. So he told her to register proprietorship, she has to pay $450. And if she wants to get a work visa, it will be another $1,000. Well, the work visa is not that important, it was really not in the scope, but it's nice to know. So I presume that it's a lot cheaper than that. Then um, we discussed, I have a qu quite a bit of a business background and I know about the forms of uh, businesses, registration, liabilities, etc. Also in Turkey, it works in an entirely different way. What's on the books is not always applied in real life. Those who lived in Turkey, they know that. There is certain tradition, like on the book, it says that before turning right, you have to turn right signal. Or before changing the lane on the road, you have to tr uh, turn signal. Uh, I can tell you probably 90% of the people never do that. They just basically swing into another lane. And it's pretty much tradition everywhere. I'm not complaining. I'm just stating the fact. That's how it is. That's what you expect. That's why you adjust your behavior in a certain way. If uh, somebody swings in front of you, well, you just accept it as a fact of life. And in this particular case, I look at accountants also as a fact of life. No more, no less. Then this particular accountant said that it has to be paid in dollars, which to me sounds really uh, contradictory. Turkish government, doesn't matter what agency it is, they want lira because they're proud of their lira. Even if it's devaluing, it doesn't matter. It's a national currency. The dollar is usually privately dealt. Some people charge dollars, some people charge euro, but the government always charges in liras, equivalent or whatever it is you can come up with. That put me on guard. I told her that this is not right. Something is really fishy going on. So I went online and I started searching. And as I said before, if you are searching online about business, Turkish business, any business in Turkey, it doesn't matter if it's visa related, residency related, anything, work visa related, search in Turkish, not in English. What you get in English is people who speak English and they try to charge you several times more than what it's worth. 
So I went and looked and obviously I saw that uh, he's really overcharging. Then I talked to another friend of mine, um, people who just live in Turkey and they are of uh, foreign descent, but they live in Turkey, they lived here for a long time. They referred me to another guy who is doing business. I talked to that guy, he referred me to his accountant. So we went to uh, another accountant. We come there and uh, I ask that accountant specific questions and without fooling around, without bullshitting us, she gives straightforward answers. Uh, what type of business you want to have, what type of form of business you want to register, etc. We give it to her and she gives exact amount. So without going any further, to register personal proprietorship in Turkey on this date, which is July 4th or July 5th now of uh, 2023, it cost 1250 lira. We're talking about less than $50. That's all it costs. There is a monthly fee which you're supposed to pay, but that's different story. And also it is different amount for different types of business uh, entity. If you register in limited uh, partnership, it will be a different amount, but it's acceptable amount. It's about $30 a month, okay? Even if you don't do anything, you still have to pay this processing fee, government fee. And if you do some business, then you will pay 18% on your profit. It doesn't really matter what it is in different countries. It's different, but that's how it is in Turkey. And if you register personal proprietorship and go over a certain amount, it can go up to 40%. So if you tend to make some money uh, in a little while, perhaps you have to change the form of registration or register different enterprise, etc. Uh, it's... What I really liked is that this person said everything is lira, everything is straight. And imagine now, $50 versus $450. And that guy actually wanted to have in dollars, this person didn't. It was just all straightforward. Uh, we went to another accountant. And uh, it was also acquaintance of another acquaintance who referred to... We come to the office, and I'm just going to give you an idea what kind of office it is. I was... I've been to offices, but this one was like a really dusty, huge office in downtown Antalya. And it seems like it's not that accountant's office. It seems like it's some kind of shared office or somebody gave her that office to, you know, uh, throw some dust in our eyes. But it didn't really work. I did not really like that office. But that's not the point. If I can get the right person to talk to, office, I can forgive. Then we start talking to this person and this person actually tells us, no, 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 you don't want to register a proprietorship. You want to register a limited company because that costs 8,000 lira to register. Okay, 8,000 lira. I say, well, that's fine. It's to register. What about uh, your fees? And the standard answer was, which I've heard probably two dozen times throughout the conversation, we'll discuss and we'll agree upon. It's like that person really doesn't know how much they're going to charge. They may charge again 400 lira or may they, they may charge you $400. So the point which I'm trying to make, number one, don't rely on your acquaintances. They have their own judgment and they can make their own mistakes. Don't fall victim of their mistakes. Maybe that particular accountant works for them for whatever reason. Maybe they have to charge a little extra because you were referred to them. Maybe that person needs to fly to Istanbul or Ankara and have a good weekend. So he will charge you a little more. Doesn't matter. Shop around. Number two. Always search internet in Turkish. Use Google Translate, translate English to Turkish and search. And uh, number three, find somebody who gives you straightforward answers and who you're comfortable with. Now, speaking of work visa, the standard answer, which you will get pretty much from any accountant here in Turkey, that to get work or work visa for yourself, you have to hire five Turkish citizens. It's like a fairy tale. I go to the website 
which is government website by Turkish government, and it says clearly there are categories where you don't have to hire any Turkish citizens. If you are trained in a certain way, if you are for special purposes, uh, you can be hired without any requirement of hiring Turkish citizens. If you're working in hammam or salon, massage salon, if you train masseuse from somewhere overseas and you are uh, trained in uh, some kind of shiatsu, um, Thai massage or whatever it is, it's not required. You can be given work visa, you can be invited. There are other requirements like the hammam has to be registered, they have to uh, submit uh, some kind of a uh, uh, accreditation etc but that's requirement for organization that's not requirement for worker and if you're a technology worker if you are uh, if you have certain skill which is not found among Turkish citizens or you cannot find uh, that particular skin or skill in Turkish citizens which is a standard uh, procedure all around the world pretty much any government has this procedure whether it will be honored or not just like with this turn signals in Turkey I don't know but it is on the books. It seems to me like some of these accountants, they just don't have time or desire to read those books and try it and see it. Because it seems like most of the people I've met dealing in this particular area and some other areas, they work by pattern. They establish certain pattern, it works for them, and they don't want to step out. They don't want to learn anything new. They don't want to try anything new. They just like to do what they do. They like to have their weekends, they like to take care of their children, which is honorable and good. Yet, if you need to have a creative decision, those are not the people you're going to visit. I'm Vas, welcome to my channel again. Remember to subscribe, leave some comments, leave some likes, and I will give you some more impressions of my life in Turkey. All the best. Good luck.